three days after Valentine's Day. I was still basking in the smugness of having flowers delivered to the office. And I had every right to feel smug because I had a great job and I absolutely loved it. The day was Friday and it was 10 to 4. And an invite popped into my calendar for 4 p.m. the same day. A meeting in the boardroom, just me. I walked down the stairs along the corridor, the prickle of suspicion building with each footstep. I got to the door, my heart in my mouth. I just knew something was wrong and I was right. I left, made it through the drive home and devastated, I cried for days. For a week, I barely moved. I tell myself, it's just a job, Jane. Don't be silly. But it wasn't just a job to me. It was who I was, my identity. It was how I fed my family. I felt as if someone had taken everything that I'd achieved up to that point and smeared a dirty mark across the lot. This wasn't the rug being pulled from under me. This was the ground opening up and everything had gone. I worried horribly about what people would think of me. But despite that, I spoke to family, friends, friends of friends, anyone really. And it turns out there are a lot of people, lovely, well-meaning people, and they're going to try and cheer you up. They're going to tell you about Bob. Brilliant Bob. Bob who's so inspiring. See, Bob got made redundant and it was the best thing that ever happened to him. Well, that's great news for Bob. But when you're in the thick of feeling sorry for yourself, other people's good news stories are not the inspiration that lovely, well-meaning people think they are. Because the mechanics of what works for someone else isn't necessarily what's right for you. What I wanted was to wake up in the morning and feel excited, to believe in myself again and believe that I was good enough. I totally lost my spark and I needed something to fire me back up again. What I now realise is that having lost my what, I was looking for my why. But I didn't have a why. What I did have was a healthy dose of imposter syndrome and an equally large mortgage. So I panicked, I gave up and I just took a job. And I hoped that that would be enough. I gave up on finding what it was that would fire me up. I gave up because I believed that our why is somehow handed to us. That there would be this blinding moment of light where my why would be gifted to me. And the only really clever gifted people could actually work out their why. And for a time, I believed that, and life worked. But over time, it became clear that I was going around and around in circles, using up all of my energy and getting nowhere. I needed change. Today, too many people find themselves with the ground beneath them gone. Unemployment, relationships ended, lives lost or changed forever. And what do we do when we find ourselves with uncertainty or difficulty? Well, we look for meaning. We look for meaning and we look for inspiration. We look to philosophers or poets. We look to faiths or cultures we admire. We look to the people who inspire us. Gandhi, Mandela, Gates. For me, it's Kylie. But it turns out that the lesson I needed most came from the Japanese culture and the philosophy of Ikigai. Ikigai comes from two words. Iki, which is life, and gai, which is worth or meaning. It's a concept that can be as small as finding the little moments of joy 
or as big as finding the meaning of life. It's over a thousand years old and it's kind of like the first ever work-life balance, but much better because its power is that it can help you find your purpose, help you live a happy life, and for some, live a long life. Now, I want to share what I took from Ikigai, and that is that there isn't this blinding moment of light. There's actually an anatomy of a why. And the insight for your why comes from doing these three things. One, find your fire. What gives you your spark? What are you passionate about? What makes you light up and come to life? Think about what you do, where you can completely lose time, even if it doesn't seem relevant. Sometimes when we do an exercise like this, we fall into the trap of thinking about the answers that other people might want to hear. Now you've got to put that to one side because this is about you and it's not a job interview. Now I start with fire because I found this one the hardest. See, I lose time when I'm gardening, but I don't want to be a gardener. So I couldn't see how this is relevant to me. But when I started to look at all of the things I enjoy about gardening, dealing with the unexpected, and there's quite a lot, um, the nurturing, the creativity, I started to see all of the little gifts that gardening gave me as the little sparks that lit me up, but were also incredibly helpful to other people. Two, find your fuel. What drives who you are? What values are important to you? What would you want other people to say or think about you? What behaviours do you admire in other people? Or sometimes the easier one is, what behaviours do you find challenging in them? Fast forward yourself to the end of your life. Are the things that you're doing and the choices you're making now going to make you feel pride or shame? Three, find your flair. What is it you're good at? What have you always just been able to do that other people can't, but you find really easy? What have you been trained to do? What education or experience do you have? Think about the tools that you've built into your toolkit. Or another way of looking at it is the problems that you enjoy solving. Now, focusing on these three areas helps you to take the pressure off yourself and moves you away from asking the really difficult question of why do I exist? And refocuses you on asking, why do I want to exist? Now, when you have the answer to all of these questions, you can start to refine them. My tip, get them down to a sentence each. Live with them play with them, and then get them down to one sentence. This is your why. Now, my why is to get the good ideas to the people who need them. And as you can see from mine, your why isn't about all the things that you want. It's about what you give to the world. That bit's really important to remember. The money the big house, the holidays, they are all a consequence of you delivering on your why. Your why is your fire. The resilience that you build, the positive resilience that guides your decisions, big or small, comes from the clarity of knowing who you are, how you want to live, and what you want to give to the world. It enables you not to be worried about what other people think of you or whether you're good enough, because you are. So what I hope you take from this, from me and from Bob, is that you challenge yourself now. Don't wait for life to push you. Don't wait for your why to be handed to you. Ask yourself, what fires me up? What fuels who I am? What's my flair? 
because you will fail, you will fall, that is life. But when the ground beneath you has gone, you'll rise because you'll find strength and satisfaction when you find your fire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.